Race does crank the say Azanti's welcome video lovers. Welcome to TacNerd 1.0. Adventures, you have happened upon the TacNerd channel on a day of glorious purpose. We have upon us a grand video challenge to make, and a stalwart, spunky group of video gun nerds has brought this to you. Before we go any further, I want to tell you all of the channels participating in this challenge today. I will list them down below in the doobly-doo. So when this video is done, make sure you visit all of their pages and watch all of their videos as well. They will drop on November 1st of 2024. They will have choices as well. Maybe not as good as mine, but choices nonetheless. Channels participating in today's challenge are the following. Gary Gunnerson's channel, Blind Sniper, of course, Arasaka Type 99, Hobo Factory, and Mississippi Millsurp. Again, go to all of their channels. Make sure you watch the video and let us know, all of us know, what you think. We're going to continue to do challenges like these, so make sure to sub to all of their channels and keep watching because we're going to have a lot more of these. Now, let's not belabor the point any longer. Let's get to why you are here. This is our video challenge, and it is a fairly simple challenge. We must choose one rifle, one pistol of military surplus that is going to I don't know. We didn't get really that far into why we're making this pick, but we're making a pick. Now, of, there has to be some limitations, of course, because if you say rifle, everyone's probably going to pick an SKS. So to make things a bit more challenging, it's going to have to be a bolt action Milserp rifle. All right, so let's not waste any time. Let's get right into it. First up is the pistol. And what did I choose? So here it is. My choice for pistol, this is the Walther P38 or Walther P1. I have here the Walther P1. Here are my reasons why I think this is the clear winner in this contest. First off, reliability. This pistol has proven itself through World War II, through post-war, through many conflicts that continue all across the globe, and it has continued to be reliable, safe, and accurate. In addition to being reliable, if anything should happen with this pistol, there are a host of places you can get parts for this pistol to repair it. And it is not a difficult pistol to work on if you need to do your own repairs. Next is modern features. This pistol actually has quite a few features that ended up going into many, many modern pistols, one being the Beretta 92. So what are some of the features of this pistol? First off, it has a manual decocker and safety, has a loaded chamber indicator, a feature that did not start appearing regularly in pistols until far, far into production, into like the 80s, maybe even 90s. In addition to that, the locking block design and the open chamber construction, again, makes this pistol incredibly safe, incredibly reliable, and very accurate. Final advantage that this pistol has, and I think probably one of the main reasons why I chose it, was caliber. It is in 9mm. Now you may or may not know, but one of the reasons behind my channel is I do tend to take a prepping mindset to most of my choices. So one of the things that I look for when choosing a Firearm is ammo availability, and NATO cartridges are probably the best at that. Being here in the United States, definitely 9mm is going to be your best bet. You're not going to have a problem finding ammo for this pistol. You should be able to go anywhere, and you should be able to find ammunition for it. Okay, so that was the pistol. What do you guys think? Let me know down below. Are there any cons to this pistol? What I'll say right off, sure. Definitely low magazine capacity isn't great, so you are going to have to get more magazines to keep feeding it. In addition to that, this is an older design. It is fairly heavy. Now, this is the Walther P1, and it does have a lighter frame, but it's still going to be fairly heavy, and it still may be somewhat harder to conceal 
if that's one of your goals. All right, folks, that's it for the pistol. Let's move on quickly to the rifle and see what I picked. Okay, here we are, rifle challenge. What did I pick from my bolt action military surplus rifle? Here it is. This is the Spanish FR7. I think this is a great choice. I have my reasons. I know you may be thinking to yourself, self, why? Why would you pick such a obscure rifle that really never fought in any major wars? and really ended up being more than a training rifle of anything else. Well, I have my reasons. Again, as I said with the pistol, first off is reliability. This is built on a Mauser type action, which as many of you know, is incredibly reliable and safe as well. All right, adventurers, second reason I think this is the best choice. You may be able to tell right from me holding this is its weight and maneuverability. For a rifle of this age, made out of steel and wood, this is actually quite light and quite maneuverable, I have to say. With this shorter barrel, you're gonna be able to maneuver around tight spaces easily, you're gonna be able to get on target quicker, and you're gonna be able to get shots off quicker. Easy, easy rifle to carry in the woods, to carry ammo for. It's short, it's light, it's everything you want in a small maneuverable firearm. Okay, next reason why I think this is a great pick. This rifle, and just like the Welther P1, does have some fairly modern features. Notably, I think these wonderful combat sights that it has does have this kind of semi-buckhorn type sight here. You can move that over easily for one, uh, 200 meters, then three, and then back over for 400. So very easy sight system. It's got this hooded sight up front. You're able to protect your sight from getting it banged or dinged walking around in the woods. It has this flash suppressor on the front. Again, also a very modern feature does have the, I don't know, wire cutters, fence cutters. I don't know how much use you're going to get out of that, but it is there. Also has this cleaning kit. It really is there just for aesthetics and to hold some, uh, and to hold the cleaning kit. Also, believe it or not, though, it does hold a bayonet. Another reason that might be helpful, people don't use those so much anymore, and I don't know how much you, use you would get out of it out there in the woods but it's there and you can mount one on there if you need to. So modern features, easily maneuverable and reliable. So last reason I picked this rifle, and you're probably making a guess of this already, is it's chambering. This rifle is chambered in 7.62 NATO. Now I know right now there's a ton of people screaming right now in the comments section of about what ammo is able to be fired in this rifle. There's quite a bit of contention about this. I can tell you from, now I did a review of this rifle on my channel already, and I, I will reference back to that. When this rifle first came into the country, there was testing done on it, and they pretty much did find that 7.62 NATO is fine for this rifle. I know... The history says that this was chambered in 7.62 set me. Many people say that was incorrect and it was 7.62 NATO all along. Whichever way you want to think of it, you fire it, you shoot it in the way you want to. Don't go by what I say. But all of the research I've done says that 7.62 NATO is fine in this. I load my own rounds for this. So I really don't have to worry about that too much. I can keep it to the pressure that I want to but you're not gonna have a problem finding ammo for this rifle anywhere in the United States. You, can go, you should be able to go into any FFL, any gun store, any sporting goods store, and you should be able to find really, really good hunting ammo or self-defense ammo for this rifle. Folks, so that was our challenge. I hope you really liked this. I had a lot of fun doing this challenge. I'm hoping we're gonna do a lot more of these. So again, please subscribe, 
like and share this video. Subscribe to all of the partners here that also participated in this challenge. And keep watching. As I said, we're going to do a lot more of these. Make sure to fire off a shot at that bell notification so you can see when all of our videos drop at bright early 9 a.m. every morning. Folks, thank you for coming here. Thank you for watching this video to the end. There is much more to come, so make sure you stay tuned in to the Tacner channel. Folks, thanks again for coming. I am out of here.